Ladies and gentlemen, fire and flash in the building! Yeah. Hell yeah. Sir, for this those of you. Your first, your first. For, for those that may uh, for may not know who you are, can you properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment and uh, plug or promote anything you'd like. Uh, yeah, my name is Justin. I front the uh, band Fire and Flesh, and we are based out of San Diego, California. Um, more specifically, half of us live in Oceanside, which is a nice little beach town north of San Diego, about 30 minutes away. Oh yeah. Let me see if I sometimes if I spotlight him it like swaps things. We'll see. Hell yeah. Uh dude, so I had the opportunity to check out every single song that you guys have, man, and and checking out going from the oldest to the newest. That's something I've never ever done before and I had a blast doing it and you could really hear the progression of the band by by doing that. So I appreciate you allowing me to do that first off. Uh, but I do think that the most yeah, recent yeah. one, the Reset the Fuse EP, is the the highlight of your guys' career as far as uh, incorporating more clean vocals with with the screams. Obviously, you heard me a million times say all the guitar stuff is fantastic. But I thought that you progressed as a vocalist by then, too. Um, it's just, just really good stuff. Do you mind if I play a song while we're kind of figuring everything out? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Cool. So let's show people what we're talking about here. So this is Fire and Flesh, of course, our guest of the day. There we go, Rudy's here, but he's muted. What's up, bro? What's happening? What's going on, man? Rudy, Fire and Flesh is the yeah, building! Hell yeah! <laughs> I gotta do it right every time. We're checking out Reset the Fuse, and then we got a ton of questions for you. Who did you who'd you guys have uh record the most recent EP? Uh so we've been going to the same producer since 2013. Okay. So um, he's gotten better too then also having heard all of his production then. So he's he's chopped his skills yeah. a little better, getting the sizzle now. I dig it. What's what's his name if you don't mind plugging yeah. plugging well, him? He, it, it, yeah, his name's Aaron Hellum. Um, so he he was partners with this guy named Zach um, in the studio called uh, Castle Ultimate. This is in the, up in, in the Bay Area. And uh, they're based out of Oakland. And uh, he parted ways after a few years with Zach. And he, like, started his own studio, which was called Hellum Sound. So he doesn't actually record that much anymore right now. He kind of, like, you know... Stop doing that and he's just focusing on like mixing and mastering for bands so actually the last two eps we did we recorded most of it ourselves and um it kind of we kind of sent him everything and then we took a few like flights out to the bay area to like you know wrap things up uh but yeah i mean it's kind of like a joint effort between us and him to get things done now and um i don't know we, we with the past two eps we kind of took the approach of not like striving for perfection and we kind of just like record and don't try to clean it up too much and then we just let the producer like do what he does was was 1051 finalized in oakland specifically the ending of it <laughs> no that, that that was out here the ending oh, okay okay because I, lo I love that part right there that's just a fun little like behind the scenes easter egg tidbit uh, at the end of the song yeah um, Ru rudy could tell you about that tonight Rudy, talk to me. What what happened? Um, well, Alex's birthday, our guitarist, our lovely guitarist Alex. That was his birthday, right, Justin? That night. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, he got out of work late, like, I don't know, 
eight, seven, eight PM or something like that. So it's like obviously we have to now go party all night since you're late to your own birthday celebration. So you know, there we go. Like Fifty one all over Oceanside, this bar, that bar. I think we drank at some Italian restaurant for a bit. Um and just, you know, each spot like drinks shots, next spot drinks shots, and then eventually we just end up at a Denny's at like six AM after this whole night. Nobody slept, of course, and then we're we're getting back home. And then um, Dustin's like, hold on, guys, I'm not going to make it inside. He leans over a bush, and then we get that lovely sound clip at the end of the song. Hell yeah, well done, well done. <laughs> yeah! It is quite lovely of a sound bit, too. Oh, man. What's a, what's your guys' personal favorite song in your set uh, that you've ever, that's actually in your set, that uh, just your personal favorite to play? As Blind As They Come is just so much fun high energy super fun parts fast where it needs to be slow where it needs to be it's just it's my favorite what would you say justin um i guess i don't know die motherfucker <laughs> that seems <laughs> like it would be like a like fan favorite point. yeah that seems like it would be like a it's fan favorite point. yeah it's it's our for some reason it's our number one played song on spotify by a lot too <laughs> hell yeah um, yeah, it's got like twelve thousand plays. My my <laughs> special uh, guest co-host today is Michaela Toes out of Florida. Michaela, Justin, Rudy, do you have a question for the for the band? Yeah, I was gonna ask like, what were your guys' main influences like on this record? Like, what what have you guys been listening to that was getting the juices flowing for the inspiration? Justin, you go, Rudy. <laughs> well, drum wise, at least, I mean, I've been listening to a lot of more like bouncier metal, I guess you could describe it, like more groovy stuff. Like a, on drums, for me, I, I like a beer a lot. They're just super heavy, yes. but they also have that like super bouncy, groovy feel where everything's not just like straight punchy, straight forward fast. Like it has that, you know, that, that groove behind it. And then um, <laughs> just as far as like little parts here and there i've always been a big dream theater fan mike portnoy specifically oh, like yeah. his, uh, creativity and stuff and it just just brings that feel to the song so not like every song sounds the same you try to like match the guitar sometimes you try to just get your own groove sometimes you know just stuff that fits the song but that's also fun and at times challenging to play before justin answers what did you think of portnoy on uh, the events unfold album um actually that being one of my favorite bands, I thought it was great. It was just like a, a collab I never knew I wanted. <laughs> yeah, it was. I thought it was I mean, superb. Yeah, I think he killed it. The fills, just everything's like perfect on that album. All right, Justin, influences. What, who are who are some of the big ones for you? On this EP specifically, you said. <laughs> yeah, Michaela, you're referring to the um, Reset the Fuse EP. Yeah, or just like anything in general. <clears throat> like, what have you guys been listening to lately that was like a main influence on the record? Ah, shit. I don't know. It's a, <laughs> I, uh, it's like a long time ago now. <laughs> it's a tough question for me. I don't know. But I, when I write music, I kind of just sit on the guitar and like flesh things out, and what sounds good is what I roll with. Um, I do remember specifically for that track, Reset the Fuse, I had some lyrics written, and I came home one day. And I told Alex, I was like, dude, I've got these lyrics. Like, we kind of need kind of like a bouncy, hardcore type of song. Um, you know, can you flesh out some riffs and see if I can put the words to it? And then, like, he shot me some ideas the next day. And then we kind of just, like, gradually snowballed and became that song. Is that is that how most of your, your guys' yeah, tracks I mean, kind of start? Like uh, you, you're yeah, like, I got, I got these, I, I got these words on paper. I want to get off, or, or maybe it's a riff, or. How do you traditionally write a song? Uh, I don't know, man. Like, it, it all varies. Sometimes, like, uh, sometimes I'll be on the fucking treadmill running and then, like, I just hear a groove in my head. You know, I'll, you know, I'll flesh it out on the guitar after and, like, keep that in my back pocket. And then when, we're, when we, you know, start demoing things, I'll just toy with it. Uh, sometimes, you know, certain lyrics hit me and then I'm like, okay, it needs this, this, and that. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I get a text from Justin at like six in the morning. He's like, "Bro, I just finished the song. You're not gonna believe it." <laughs> like, Bro, I got it. <laughs> <Bruh>. <laughs> Hell yeah, 
Justin, was it was it hard for you? Oh, you're frozen on my end, by the way. There you go. Uh, was it hard for you to relieve prime like 100% vocal duties about like I don't know. I guess it was like two EPs ago when clean singing kind of started to come around. Was it? How did that conversation go down? As far as like, I think we could use one of you guys doing vocals in addition. Well, first off, <laughs> I hate singing. I fucking hate it. I don't like it. I don't think I have like the best singing voice. I hate I hate singing so much. The only reason I, I even like staying on past DPs is because like our producer, you know, kinda nagged me. He's like, Well, this calls for like a good clean hook or something, like you should try it. And uh more like specifically Deaths of Hell. Um, like there's a hook in that song. And it I mean, it sounds really good, you know. I hated singing it and actually when we play that when we play that song live, I never sing it. I just scream through that hook. Mm. Uh, but now, now that we have Will, you know, um, doing vocal duties, like we do it. But yeah, I, I hate singing. So when I when I decided to relinquish it, give it to Will is like it was a non-issue. You know, uh, Will actually wasn't in the band for a few years because he was off at nursing school finishing up. And so when he finished nursing school, he. Uh, he joined full time basically, and I told him like now that he's fully involved, like he's got to handle all the vocals, like the clean vocals. So, like the, we're we're kind of like molding his voice. Go ahead. No, nothing. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, yeah. Anyways, we're kind of like molding his voice to because he's got a great voice, but um, uh, we're trying to we're trying to like have him like have a little bit more grit, you know. For sure. Uh, so, so it's a little bit more of an uh, like aggressive style. Uh, Chad wants to know where are your favorite places to play shows in San Diego. Um, for for a couple of years, it was uh, Legacy Brew Brew House down the street from where we live, but they shut down like once and for good. Um, I think COVID kind of wrecked them, like their business. Legacy Brew House. I've I don't think I've I've only been to San Diego once and it was for a football game. I've never actually done like bar hopping or or gone to any venues over there. I'm due. Bancroft was fun. We did that one for like a lot in a short amount of time. Let's jam. Uh, let's jam. I can't hear you, Rudy. Yeah, Rudy, maybe just be a hair louder if you could. But let's jam consecrated yeah. next. Okay. But before we do, I do want to uh, do some trivia with you guys. And I know you told me that. You're a fan of hot sauce, so hopefully you brought yeah, both some, of us, yeah. brought some hot sauce. Okay, the cool thing about the trivia is you get to pick the topic. What movie or TV show have you seen the absolute most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Damn. See, that sucks for me because when I watch TV, it's always just for background noise. So I miss out on a lot of specifics. I'll give you a second to think about it. How about that? I'll give you a second to think about it. Let's jam consecrated. Did you guys think of an answer for a trivia topic? I feel like we could nail some Fight Club, um, trivia, honestly. <laughs> Fight Club works? That's a good one. What would you say, Rudy? Did you have a different one? No, no. I, I'm good with that. Cool. All right, give me a minute on Fight Club. Michaela, do you have another question for the band? <laughs> Um, when you guys were growing up, like what, what first got you into <clears throat> heavy music? Like, and like, what, what age did you like make the change into like the metal, metal core side of things, you know, heavy it up or like what bands like transitioned you into like finding the heavier stuff? So for me, I got ready. Yeah, it didn't start for me until way later, I feel. I grew up listening to just, like, all the radio stuff, um, some jazz. Um, Carlos Santana was, like, big. And then 13, like, 13, 14, getting into high school, finally got the chance to be around other people that listened to metal. And I, like, you know, metal was just not on my radar at all for whatever reason. And then <laughs> all that year, like, freshman year, it was just, like, Dream Theater, Event Sevenfold, System of a Down, Lamb of God, Metallic, the Core, like all at once. And I was like, what is this? This is amazing. And just on from there. 
You just, you just wanted yes. a metal retreat one weekend and just came back a new man or something, it sounds like. <laughs> Hell yeah. It was, it was a great year. <laughs> That's awesome. I do have the trivia ready. Oh, snap. And I think, I think we may be able to stop it. Let's see. <laughs> In Fight Club, there is a narrator that talks throughout the movie. At one point, the narrator says, how much blood you can swallow before you get sick. How much blood? A pint. A pint is correct! Yeah, hell yeah. Well done. <laughs> a pint is correct. We're gonna have to give, give him a harder one next. And what do you know it? It landed on some hot sauce. Fellas, you did not have to do the hot sauce. I have to do the hot sauce. Pick Pick hot sauce. sauce. I have to do the hot sauce. You do not have to if you don't want to. But <laughs> you're welcome to join in. Pick a number one through fourteen. Who's picking a number? Just toss out two numbers. One 14, through fourteen. Seven. Thirteen and seven. We'll just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> oh man. I shouldn't have done that. Ghost chili and ghost pepper hot sauce is what it landed on. I just added the two together to give it 20. But, uh, yeah. Hell yeah. So I, I do see, yeah, it's up there. But it does look like 1051 is now oh, the, snap. the favorite. And uh, we should jam that one, too. Mm. But uh, what's the what's the hardest song for you guys to play in your set as far as, like, technicality or maybe it's really straining on the vocals? As the blind as they come, one. it's pretty straining on the vocals. <laughs> My favorite one. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Wrong. Wrong. I was, I'm wrong. I got the titles mixed up. It's Through My Eyes to Pestilence. <laughs> that one's nonstop vocally. That one's pretty hard. Which, do you tend to leave the really hard ones? Oh, that is hot. The really hard ones for like at the end or get it out of the way early? Um, I kind of prefer it early. Yeah. Sometimes for when, when like the really hard ones vocally come up first, it kind of like opens up your throat for the rest of the show. Yeah. Speaking of that, do you have any do you have any interesting like warm up techniques before before you step on stage? <laughs> uh, vocally, you want to hear it? Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering too. Also, if if you have a, a, a technique yourself, Rudy, <laughs> keep doing that. That's what I do before I go on. I drink tons of water and tea, and then I just do this. And it loosens everything up. Hell yeah. How'd you, is that just something that you came up with, or uh, is that a technique, I, that, like a professional technique? Fuck, if I know, dude. I think I just started doing it one day. I don't know. <laughs> and then, and then I, I also um, I open my mouth up as wide as possible, too. Like I do that for like 10 minutes. Like that, and it just kind of like loosens everything up. Interesting. Yeah. I always hear like different different techniques. Michaela, do you ever do did you ever do anything like just to warm up like your sweeps or anything before playing guitar on stage? Um, just like a lot of hand stretching and like the basic exercise, like one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, <clears throat> just to loosen the hands up. That's as far as I went really though. Or those um those grips for um, baseball, too, oh, yeah. to make yeah, your hands, too, yeah. hands a little bit stronger. Interesting. Yeah, Rudy does that before he gets hand jobs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, fellas, I know for a fact this trivia right here is going to stump you. In Fight Club, my redemption trivia... When Marla went around to the Paper Street house, what were the space monkeys doing? That's literally what the question says. Huh. When I'll repeat, when Marla went around to the Paper Street house, what were the space monkeys doing? Oh, I feel like I know this. Uh, 
think we're gonna get them. I feel like they were. I feel like they were in the backyard. There were a bunch of them in the backyard for some reason, but I can't remember what they were doing. We're gonna call it a stump. We'll see. We'll see if uh, Chad can get it real quick before I say the answer. But let's jam some Tefid one. All right, so I know that Reset the Fuse came out in 2021. It's almost 2023. Can we expect some new music fairly soon? Sorry, man, you cut out. Say that again. I was wondering if, if we could expect some new music from you guys uh, in the near future. Oh, shit. Yeah, I mean, we've been, we've been writing a lot the past couple of years, and we're sitting on... Fuck. Probably like 20 tracks. Double disc um, maybe in the future? A lot of them have to get... No, no. We'll just release EPs and like singles. Yeah. It's, it's kind of not um, in band's best interest anymore to do double disc, I feel like. Yeah, That's you kind of just like... <laughs> yeah, you got you to keep people you know, wanting more. And so you just give them like a little drip. You know, yeah, a slow drip. It in. <laughs> yes. The slow drip. Okay, I'll be... I don't see Even anyone anymore. that got the trivia. By the way, the answer was they were burning their fingertips so they wouldn't they would be indecipherable. Oh, it's when they were inside. Oh shit! I don't know if that's what you guys were expecting the answer to be, but regardless, no. uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, Michaela, let's do let's do final questions. I have I have a pretty good last question, but Michaela, what's your final question for for the fellas? Favorite munchie snack. Good call. <laughs> Shit. Well, popcorn for me. Justin, it's gonna be those I was gonna say those those like gas station peanuts. Like Yo, the, the long tube so ones? Good. Dude, you would not those look are, Yeah, those are great. Like the blue bag. Straight. It's all about the blue bag. The Japanese peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Well and it's so perfect. But do you so popcorn and peanuts? But Rudy, what would you say is your your favorite munchie? I mean, those same peanuts. Honestly, they're great. I was I bought them, and then Justin's yeah. like, "What are those? Let me try some." And then he just fucking like stole all the bags I had. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! And then, I, and then I, I I discovered them at my local Walgreens, and now I buy them every day. Well, my uh, my final question for you, fellas. Hey, so I'm sorry. Um, so Fight Club, the, uh, the intro to Inner Beast, that's from Fight Club. Oh, okay. Cool. Hell yeah. I did not know that. Uh, but my final question for you guys is kind of a serious one. Uh, what is a, a piece of musical advice somebody in the industry has given you that kind of made you take your career more seriously or a mistake you made early on as a band that you don't want any starting up band to make? Well, we're not a big band, so what the fuck do we know, right? We, we just write music. We found what we love to do, and we just do it. <laughs> um, I'd say I'd say the most important thing is to um, surround yourself with like-minded musicians and musicians who want to just like improve upon their craft. Um, sometimes going in, you know, joining a band and like starting a band with your friends doesn't really work out. It's the whole concept of like, don't, don't ever go into business with your friends. You know, the same thing kind of applies there. Um, yeah. Cool. We'll another, take it. Another good one that I remember was um, someone said talent only gets you so far. So even if like music's in your family and you like pick up an instrument and you're good at it right off the bat, I mean, you still have to practice. You still have to put in the work. If you just like try to rely on that talent, you're going to, get to a point where you plateau and you're you're not getting better and you don't know how to get better so yeah is there is and never the, write the same CD or ep never write the what i'm sorry never write the same ep uh, we kind of have like that philosophy in this band so if you notice like each ep we have is like completely different than the last it's, it's very true i would agree with that statement and that's what I love. It's very, it's very versatile. It's not the same chug riffs and the same style over and over again. It is, it is very cool how it's all over the place. And then it completely changes from like two EPs back when when Will when you said Will joined, and then he's really prominent on Reset. 
But I really had a blast doing this as far as the deep dive goes. So I appreciate you guys asking me to do it in the first place. But uh, we look forward to... What's your, what's your favorite try? Man, it's so hard. Um, 1051 was one of my favorites. Uh, I did like the Through My Eyes. There was one on the... Oh, there was one on this one too that I really liked. I think I... So yeah, Slaves to a Digital Age was one of my favorites also. There was a bunch. There was a bunch. Hopefully it comes out soon. We can check out the video that you said you might have attached to it. Uh, That'll be awesome. But uh, Justin, Rudy, I appreciate you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. Please don't be strangers. Oh, you guys too, man. You guys, you too. Ladies and gentlemen, fire and flash! Hell yeah! Cheers.